How do you come back from a cheat day? Well, that is a question that so many people ask themselves after they've done the deed. So we all screw up in our diet, our nutrition. The key is getting right back on track as soon as possible. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, Andrew here, Melbourne Superman Super Fit Cosplay. So, I am going to make this video today. You're going to see what a day in the life is for me after I have cheated on my diet. So, my cheats, my overeat days, they are planned. So, I will say this. Make sure that you, if you are on a weight loss or a fat loss journey, weigh, weigh out the pros and cons. I don't recommend having cheat days if it's your first sort of journey into it or if you're just getting started but there are a few tips and tricks that if you do screw up if you do make the the mistakes early on <clears throat> you can get back on track right away you got to remember if you do have a cheat meal or a cheat day the next few days are going to be hard they're going to feel a little bit groggy and gross uh, for me i tend to hold a lot of water for the next two or three days afterward um, and for me, I don't find that there's any necessary benefit in a cheat meal. Really, there's just not. Uh, well, okay, metabolic, meta, well, metabolically speaking, eh, the research is shoddy at best. It's not gonna speed up your metabolism, it's not gonna slow it down completely. What a cheat day is, is it is a break for you mentally if you're really being stringent with your nutrition. So for me, that's what it is. Like, I have the same thing pretty much every day, as you've seen in one of my last videos. And every now and then I like to have something fun. So last night I did that. I had uh, some of my trail mix that, that I love. That's my favorite snack, as you would have seen again on another one of my videos. And it's not, I didn't have the sugar-free one. I had the just all out chocolate bits and like uh, fruits and nuts and stuff. So it was really good. I had a big portion of it, I loved it. Um, so today what I'm gonna show you is what I do the day after a cheat meal to get my body back on track as fast as possible. And stay tuned for the end because there will be an excellent workout for you to do if you really wanna fast track that day after. Here we go. All right, so I find that the best way to tackle this is to start right away first thing in the morning. So generally what I do every morning is I have a glass of water anyway, but definitely after the day of a cheat meal because you wanna drink as much water as you can safely so that your body can process and get rid of that water weight. So in terms of the temperature of the water, cold water doesn't burn like a lot more calories like people will tell you. Warm water won't do give you any more benefit. Like any temperature change in the water, the research, again, it's shoddy at best, and it, it's not really worth, you just drink the water that you like drinking. For me, I like room temperature water, so here we go, big glass of water. That's a big glass of water. The other benefit to drinking a lot of water is it, if you have a big glass, if you know you're gonna have a big meal or like a cheat meal, drink a big glass of water beforehand and it'll keep you a little bit more fuller and you'll, you'll probably be less likely to overeat. So basically this is my breakfast, so black coffee as per normal, but then I'll have just a big old bowl of egg whites. So this is basically one of those egg white cartons. So in this entire bowl, there's probably about 250 calories, very minimal carbs, ton of protein. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go like carb free on the day after uh, of a cheat meal, but certainly if you are on a plan, you, you, you kind of have to offset your macros a little bit if you are counting calories. So I don't count calories, but I know pretty much what my body needs. So this is, this is where I start. A big scrambled egg white bowl and a cup of coffee. So with cheat days, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. 
there are a lot of things that will come up that will make you feel like it's over or that your goals just aren't worth it anymore because it's too hard. And I understand that it can feel like that. So there are some challenges when it comes to cheat days. So you're seeing how I navigate my cheat days and that's that works for me. But there are some tips that you can utilize that will work for you and you can put these sort of into play, into action, how it will work for you. Because what works for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for the next person. So in order to understand how to get back from a cheat meal, we have to sort of dissect what it is that will help you in the best possible way moving forward. So what is the challenge? What are the main challenges of a cheat day? Well, there are three aspects that I find that will ne be negatively impacted by a cheat day. And that's mental, physical, and the goal setting in general. So mentally, you're probably going to feel a lot of guilt because you've been doing so well for so long and then all of a sudden it's been thrown off track. Or maybe it's you're just starting out and you're feeling guilty because you haven't been doing this that long and why is it so hard? So you're going to feel the guilt. You're going to feel that it is you're going to come down on yourself, but you can't do that because the thing is when you come down on yourself, it's really easy to let it go too far and to tell yourself that it's not worth it or that you're not worth it. So you have to sort of keep that in check. Just understand that with a cheat day, it's a mistake. Mistakes happen. You can come back from it just because you've had one cheat day or one cheat meal, even a cheat week, hopefully not. You can come back from it. So it's important not to let yourself guilt yourself into giving up. The next thing, the physical, the bloating, the weight gain, the sort of lethargy. So the bloating, depending, okay, if you cheated on your meal for a day or two, the bloating mostly is going to come from water weight. And you're going to find that you're going to gain a couple, uh, couple kilograms, a couple pounds, whatever, over the next couple days after. But you'll also find that if you stick to your nutrition plan and get back to normal, that's going to drop right away because it is mostly going to be water weight from sodium from just the extra calories in your body wanting to hold on to everything longer than it needs to. So the bloating doesn't necessarily mean that you've gained all this fat, all this weight. It just means that your body is dealing with the overload and that it is retaining water and it is a normal part of the process and it will go away. And then the third, the goal setting you're going to find that after a cheat day, if you're not used to it, or if you didn't plan it, or if you're not sure how to get back, you're going to have disrupted, disrupted eating habits. Look at me today. So I eat the same thing every day. I've said that ad nauseum. Um, so my disrupted eating now today is that I'm not eating the way that I normally do. I'm eating less calories. I'm eating less carbs. I'm trying to sort of undo the damage. And it doesn't, you don't want to fall into that habit too hard. I do it because I know I can control it, but I have been in a spot and I know people who are in a spot where they can't control it and they downward spiral. So you have to be aware that if you're going to have a cheat day, you're going to have disrupted eating. You can get back to your regular nutrition the day after. Certainly you might not need to modify. You don't really need to if you don't want to. I do because I like to fast track it, but be prepared because not only will it be disrupted eating from your actual nutrition itself because you're trying to make up for it but it will it will start to you'll start to crave things that you maybe weren't craving before because you've gotten a taste of it that you haven't had in such a while so if it's something like sugar you're gonna be like wow i want more more of that or if it's something savory it's gonna be like wow i want more of that so be prepared for your body to crave that and try to fight it as much as possible my my sort of feeling is if you're going to have a cheat day, don't do it two, two days in a row. So that's the challenge of it. In a little bit, we'll get into the recovery. All right. So normally after a cheat day, I find that it's really important to keep your activity levels high. Uh, I try to take about 10 to 15,000 steps a day anyway, uh, which is generally not hard because I run so much. But the day after, you really want to get that going. Now, normally I would do this outside, but I'm going to take about a 15-minute walk just to 
get some steps up, but the reason that I'm not doing it outside is because I'm waiting for a package to be delivered and it needs a signature. So I hate that when it gets like attempted and then I have to go to the post office. Mm. But yeah, so I'll generally find a spot just to go for like a 10 to 15 minute walk, like something that I normally wouldn't do because my activity levels are so high anyway. But after, after a cheat meal or a cheat day, it's good to just get that activity level back up. All right, I find that a really good way to curb my uh, sweet tooth after a cheat meal day, because for me, cheat meals are generally sweet rather than savory. I have a massive sweet tooth, uh, is to sort of combat that with something sweet. This way I'm not feeling like I'm depriving myself, but I'm also giving myself something a little bit more healthy. So protein bars, the jury's out. So they're not the healthiest option in the world. This is a low carb uh, BSC collagen protein bar, it's chocolate peanut butter, it's one of my favorites. It's just something that I'll do after the day of a cheat meal so that it helps me sort of continue on without feeling like I've had all this sweet and then nothing like uh, nothing else. So I highly recommend that if you do have a sweet tooth, keep healthy snacks around. No sugar stuff. I mean, no sugar doesn't always mean healthy, but like the empty calories that come from processed carbohydrates like regular chocolate or a regular chocolate bar, it's not worth it. So this way you can get your sweet tooth with something that's not going to just destroy everything that you work so hard for. So here we go. So how do you recover from a cheat day? Well, okay. Many different ways to do that. For me, there's a combination of a little bit of extra activity, modifying my caloric intake, and hydration. So, so it's not just about physical recovery, though. You have to look at the mental aspects as well. So, okay. So in terms of hydration, drink... I recommend if you're drinking two liters of water a day, bump that up half a liter to a liter, have three liters of water. Um, this way you can flush out some of the, you're not gonna drink yourself thin, you're not gonna flush out calories, that's not what it, what it is, that's not how it works, but to get rid of excess water, it helps to drink more water so that your body's not holding on to it, so that you can excrete it. You wanna focus on nutrient dense foods. So for me, when I have my dinner later, my snacks later and everything, I'll throw in probably extra veggies that I don't normally, like more broccolis, more cruciferous greens, more heavy, dense foods to keep me full, to keep my body moving. So you want to focus on nutrient-dense foods. That's also going to help you stay satiated as well, so you're not really craving much. That's kind of what I was talking about with the water in, in the morning, or having a big glass of water before a cheat meal. You then want to focus on your working out, your, your activity, right? So for me... Um, my, so today is, what's today? Thursday. Normally I have a 70 minute, uh, run, which is either chasing birds. So up, up a mountain for as much elevation gain as I can. And I also have my, my, my strength training, which is generally my second chest day slash a bit of leg work to keep them healthy for running. So today what I did was I added a little bit of extra cardio, a little bit of extra steps. So I didn't go too nuts on the cardio. Um, so basically there is that 20 minute sort of high intensity interval. Now that is really only 10 minutes of work, right? Because 10 minutes is spent recovering, 10 minutes is spent in that high intensity interval. So it's not like a long time, but it helps get you much more active. So at this point today, I've taken over 20, 20, uh, 22,000 steps. So that's extreme, but it is, it is much more of an active day than it normally would be because again, you want to keep your body moving and working. And then the next thing is you got to get back on your nutrition. That's the, that's the thing that will get you the, like the furthest, right? That the sooner you can get back onto your nutrition in, as into, as in what's normal for you, the better off you're going to be. So make sure that you get right back on that plan, right back into your caloric, caloric needs. Don't do it two days in a row. Uh, don't do it for a week. Like, Again, if it happens, it happens, but the sooner you can get back onto some sort of normalcy, the better off you're gonna be. So, don't, and, and that, that goes the opposite way. Don't, don't, don't starve yourself. Don't um, do crash diets. Don't, don't do uh, an, an, absor uh, an exorbitant amount of exercise. Just get back to normal as soon as possible. Like I said, I'm doing a bit of a modify today, but I'm still, I'm still gonna eat plenty. It's just what am I eating and how am I utilizing it as fuel? So that's your recovery.
a little bit later. We'll talk to you about what exactly happens from here. All right, so I'm cooking my next meal. So again, it's kangaroo as per normal. So I'm gonna cook this just the way that I normally do. I'll put the taco seasoning into it that I like. I'll put the egg whites into it that I like to fluff it out a little bit. But again, that's, that's kind of falling into the category of making sure that you're eating nu nutrient dense foods, right? A, a day after your cheat meal so that you can keep yourself satiated, you can stay healthy. What I'll do with this is I'll add much more vegetables to it than I normally do. Um, just to really drive home that nutrient dense day to really keep the body moving and going and staying healthy and full and satiated. But uh, yeah, kangaroo, really easy, really easy to, to cook. You just cook it until you can cook it till it's well done. That's what I do. Um, but it is one of the leanest sources of meat that you can eat if you're living in Australia. Uh, I highly recommend it. It is an acquired taste, but definitely, definitely a worthwhile one. All right, so you cheated, you have messed up your nutrition, you're now, you're now into the recovery aspect, you're, you're getting everything sort of taken care of that you want to take care of to make sure that you are in the best possible position to move forward. So what now? What now? What do you do with the information? What do you do with what you've done? What do you do with how you move forward? So first, don't let it derail your goals. Just absolutely don't, don't let it derail you. You messed up, you made a mistake, fine. Don't be too hard on yourself. Be hard enough on yourself so that you can understand the severity of it. But don't let it mentally break you down that you think to yourself, eh, it's not worth it anymore, this is too hard. Don't let it derail you. Two, make sure you're staying positive, you're staying active. So stay positive about what it is that you're doing. It doesn't matter, like, look toward the future. So you made a mistake, you know, it happened, you can't do anything about it. Stay positive because now you're at the beginning of your journey again, sort of. You're, you're, it's been zero days since your last accident kind of thing. And so you basically, you, you can stay positive about the journey ahead. You stay active. You, you, keep, you keep that activity level. So you keep those, those real um, uh, uh, endorphins high and you're really excited about everything. So keep yourself positive and active. And then the third thing, always remind yourself of your goals. Why did you do this? What is the point of what you're doing? What's your why? What's your short-term goal? Like for me right now, I've got a couple of short-term girl uh, goals. Jeez, girls, goals, girls, goals. Short-term goals in terms of races, my um, show fitness. I'm, I'm involved in another show at the moment. My physique, but my why? And those are all short-term goals that w always need to be tweaked. But my why? What's your why? My why is that I never want to go back to what I used to be in terms of having a poor relationship with food, having anxiety, um, exercise bulimia, anorexia, bulimia, bulimia. I don't want to let myself go back to that. And so my why is to make sure that I'm living as mentally healthy and physically healthy as possible so that I don't fall back into old habits. What's your why? What's the thing that is going to take you long term? Short term goals are great, but once you hit those short term goals, what comes next? So you've got to have your why. And that's basically where you go from there after a cheat meal. So let's recap. The challenge, the bloating, the guilt, the disrupted eating. How are you going to combat those? What are you going to tell yourself to make sure that it's okay, that you're going to be able to move forward? Your recovery, your hydration, your nutrient dense foods, the workout. What are you doing to work out? Is it normal? Is it a little bit more extended? and then getting back on your nutrition as fast as possible. And then where do you go from here? You don't let it derail your progress. You do, you do stay positive and active, and you remind yourself of your goals, your short-term goals. Why can't I say that word? Short-term goals and your why. So from here, my question to you is, I, I challenge you to comment down below what what is it that you do when you've had a cheat day? How is it that you treat yourself after you've had a cheat day? What is it that you do to stop yourself from doing it if you know that you're having those cravings? How do you combat that? Give us all some tips. Give the, give the other community some tips. I'd love to see what it is that you do, what you, what you do to recover, or what you do to avoid. So look, that's gonna do it for me for this video on how to handle your cheat days, how to do it right if you are planning them out. So, 
Again, if you enjoyed this video, if you got a lot out of it, if you want to keep watching my stuff, so again, it's fitness, it's Superman, it's pop culture, it's cosplay, reactions, a bunch of good stuff. We're, we're just a we're just chaotic bunch over here. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notifications bell, ding, ding, so that you're always kept in the loop about my new videos coming out. I do try to post at least once a week. Lately, I've been posting more often because I've got a little bit more time. Please, again, like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out my channel. Follow me at Melbourne Superman on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. All right, so as promised, here we are at the end of the day. I'm going to give a bit of a workout for you. So basically, this is a high-intensity interval training style workout. So again, the research on these isn't like hugely anything much more than like baseline foundation stuff. Like you're going to burn calories, of course. Are you going to burn that many calories after you're done with a HIIT workout than you normally would after like a regular style workout? Who's to say? Um, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to compare it to, right? Because I can do an hour of steady state cardio or I can do 20 minutes of high intensity interval training and it just depends on what my body's going to do afterward. But high intensity interval just helps you burn more calories quicker during the workout than say an hour of a slower burn where your heart rate's not working at a higher rate. So what I do for my high intensity intervals is I'll take a minute or two and I'll try to bring my heart rate up as much as I can and then I'll take equal amount of rest. So here we go. All right, we're going to get into our first interval now. Here we go. So I'll probably set the treadmill up about 15 kilometers an hour, so about a four minute kilometer. And I'll hold that pace for about a minute or two and then bring my heart rate right back down. Here we go. Okay, that's my first minute done. It's about, got my heart rate up to about 150. And now it'll start to decrease. I would like to try to bring my heart rate up to 165. So I'm going to prolong the next round. All right, getting closer. So about a minute and 10. Got my heart rate up to 155. So, I might keep it at a minute and 10. I don't want to push it too much because I've already worked out quite a bit today. And I don't want to get obsessive. So I'll keep it at one minute, one minute, 10 seconds. Similar, uh, equal amount of rest. But I'll increase the speed to 15.5. No more messing around. I'm gonna take it up to 16 speed. So, it's about 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers per hour, six minute mile, um, my fastest mile that I've ever done being 545. So that's right at the upper limit for me. Uh, that should get my heart rate up pretty well. One sixty-two. All right. We're gonna take it up to seventeen. Yeah. One sixty-four. In a minute. Look, I'll take that. All right. That's that done. So now it's just the rest of the day is per normal. I'll grab a post-hit meal which is basically just gonna be my kangaroo dinner. <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> uh, and then before bed, I'll have a protein bar snack. Still plenty of water to drink. And that's it. That's my day after a cheat meal day.